everybody, it's Amy from Yoso Boho. Welcome to the Thursday Night Thrift Haul. This thrift haul happened weeks ago. As you know, everything is shut down and um, you know nobody is thrifting. So if you watched the last couple of videos, you've seen that uh, I have had some inventory kind of backlogged and this is the last of it, but don't worry. There are other ideas I have in mind for some content generation over the next several weeks and I will share that at the end of this video. So let's jump right in. First of all, I wanna start with something fun. This guy right here. Have you ever seen anything like this? Do you have a guess as to what it might be? If you do, put it in the comments. Tell me what you thought it was or if you knew what it was. It's old, I could tell you that. We'll come back to it at the end just to make a game of it. Let's start over here with this really nice painting. This is a acrylic canvas attached to wood. I can feel it's definitely um, been attached, maybe glued and then painted on. On this nice piece of hand carved, you know, framed out wood, um, the piece is very well done. Nice details. There is some troubling areas that I'm going to have to address. I'm going to see if I can clean them or work them out in some kind of way. I have to be very careful if this is acrylic, so, um, but hopefully I can clean them. And it's signed by R. Cameron. It's also signed on the back with a date. Here you can see R. Cameron, 1973. And I paid $2, so I don't know what this was, but they had $4 on it, and on that day, everything in green, marked with green, was half off. This may have been the only thing I bought that was green, but the $2 definitely um, inspired me to not walk away from this. So, and I don't know. I don't know what I will uh, price this for. I have a hard time with unique... Um, pieces like this. I'm going to have to see if this artist is, has any other listed things or if I can find a comparable. But if, you know, if I was to put it up in the shop after doing a little bit of cleanup, I'd say somewhere in the $20, $30 range maybe. But yeah, nice piece. Next I found these. These two mugs are Japanese. They are very reminiscent of Odegari mugs. I think they're in the style of Odegari. They're not signed. A lot of the Odegari studio mugs were actually marked. Um, doesn't mean that these aren't Odegari, but um, people collect Odegari. They have a really unique look. A lot of them are this speckled kind of stone wear. This is neat. It has kind of a metallic look to the glaze. And you'll see some of the Odegari mugs have this brown that's on the rim and then reflected on the handle. So they're really good to look out for. They're very collectible. Probably this set somewhere in the $16 to $20 range for the two of them. I paid a dollar each. Most of the mugs at my Goodwill are a buck. This is a nice find and I'll put up some comps on the screen as I'm talking about these so you can see other similar mugs, some Odegari, and um, a lot of them are more seascapes, birds, um, animals, but they're really cool. Um, if you have a collection of them, I would be slightly jealous. All right, next, I found these adorable pieces from the 60s. I know they're from the 60s because they are signed. So these are the ceramic pieces that could be ordered as blanks. Um, at home you would paint them and I have found a few other sets on eBay where they're maybe tan with a pink elephant or you know some other different kind of painting because these are all unique. They're painted by the person who you know bought and created them. So here I think that initial is maybe MY 1964. And yes, that's a dollar I paid for that. So super cute with the handle, the bowl, great condition, no chips or cracks on this piece. It did have a matching plate and I had to pick that up. 
There are, however, some dings here on the edges. I think I paid $2, yep, $2 for this. Now, the sets I'm seeing on eBay usually also have a cup. So it's like a set of three, plate bowl cup, and they go from 35 to maybe low 40s. For this set, because I have some chippies and only two pieces, I'll probably price them around 18 to 20. That's likely what they will be priced at, and I may list them or I may add them over to the shop. Next, I found this really cute tin. I'm not really sure the age of this one. I love the colors. I love the blue and the pink with the gold, and the shape is cool. I found some others online. A lot that were kind of in this oct octagon shape were candy. Um, holding tins, but this doesn't have any marks on it. So it doesn't give me any indication of it actually being anything. It, you know, for all it's worth, it might be an 80s or 90s import, but for $1.50, which is what I paid for it, I figured, you know, it's fun, it's cute, and it's a box, and it holds things. Surprise of all surprise, it had these little magnets in it. They're like super powered magnets. But um, I haven't looked them up or, you know, tried to see how old they were. I'll be interested to find out some holiday, some holiday magnets in there. Again, for price, maybe eight, six to eight dollars, probably in the shop, but we'll see. Moving along, how about this thing? It's a little crazy. <laughs> I wasn't exactly sure what this was. It is a block, just a hollow block, that somebody has fastened a very nice, old, heavy as heck door knocker. I think this is a brass door knocker, probably about the age of my house, so Victorian-ish. Um, I've seen quite a few of these online, a lot of them do not have this strike plate, which this does. So I'm seeing them right in the, you know, anywhere from 35 to 45 without a strike plate. And who knows? <laughs> I have to do some more research. I want to take this apart. I want to see if there's any uh, markings underneath there. And, you know, if I sell it, I'll sell it as, you know, without this block. But I paid $3 for it. And I imagine, you know, I can at least ask 35, but with the strike plate and depending on if there's any sort of markings or indication of, you know, what it actually is, I don't know, maybe a bit more, but it's very cool. I absolutely love it. These are cool. So I saw these and I thought, oh, those are neat. And Sometimes you just buy something that you can tell has a quality to it. Um, I'm really into blown glass and I knew that this, this applied piece here was, you know, a blown glass piece. It's, they took hot glass and actually stamped, pressed it on there. And then this is an applied blown glass, this handle. The fact that they're so well done. Um, oh, hello. My dog has decided to join us. What are you doing? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I knew that these were something. So I picked them up. They're not my normal, you know, thing. They may be vintage. From what I'm looking up, I think they are vintage. They are, you can see in the, in the bottom, they have a reversed etched mark. I don't know if you can read that, but it says Rosenthal. And Rosenthal Glass, the Rosenthal Glass Studio, makes very expensive glass pieces. I found another piece on eBay. I'll share it here in the video. I'm not sure which size it is, but it has a little decal here with four Bs. Not, not bumblebees, but like the letter B. And the seller even says, I don't know what the, you know, what the Bs mean, but they're trying to sell that mug. Excuse us. They're, they're trying to sell that mug for $70. Um, can you get down? 
We're a little busy here. Go on, go on, go on. Thank you. Um, can you hear his clicking claws? He needs his claws done so bad, but it's just gonna be it's just gonna be a while, buddy, until we can do that because you know your groomer isn't available at the moment. He'll be clicking around here for a bit. Anyway, back onto these. I, I don't think you know I would ever expect to get seventy dollars a piece for these. I do think they are special. I will hope to find a little bit more information on them, but my goodness, if they are worth, you know, that, how lucky am I to have found such cool things? This guy has like a Chinese and this one has um, a Chinese symbol and this one has like an anchor. So really cool. Maybe this is, this was like a set that somebody bought for maybe a husband and wife or an anniversary or who knows. But very cool. Speaking of very cool, this is probably, this may be my favorite. This is probably my second favorite find um, from the thrift store that day. This is a very old milk glass trinket box. And I can say it's very old because there's some indications of its age. So if you find milk glass, which I've told you in the past, doesn't sell very well if it's a vase or a cup or a, you know, there's, there are some variations of milk glass that do sell well. Look for them. One is old, old milk glass, which you can tell because it almost gets transparent around the edges. Can you see that? Where it's, there's like no coloration. It kind of changes, dynamically changes with age. That's an indication of old milk glass. So this piece we're looking at is probably over 120 years. I wanna say it's probably right late 1800s. And to find it at my thrift store, I was thrilled, you know, because this is a true antique. And these, if you see these online, they go anywhere from 35 to $55, depending on the quality of the age. This one does have a minor chip and I'll tell you what this is this is some good advice when you look at these things feel with your fingers along the edges because oftentimes you you know you move this around you won't see a chip as much as you'll feel it and when I ran my finger it's right there you see it it's right there so when I ran my finger around it I felt that um, I don't think that takes too much away from this piece it's just gorgeous you can even see on the bottom see how the glass it changes over time like a window like an old if you've ever been into um, like an old house my, my parents farmhouse the windows over time they run time so you'll see the waves and the the glass will get kind of thicker and wavier at the bottom of the window pane and this is kind of the same thing where it just changes over time so there's no real damage between, I think there might be a flea bite. And when I say flea bite, I mean a tiny, you can't see it with your eyes, you can feel it. But um, usually the biggest damage is between the lid and the box where you know it gets slammed down too hard and there's not, there's not any damage there. So it's really pretty. I would probably in the shop ask, you know, $40 I think which I paid two for this. I've already washed this down. It, I, I'm still seeing some dust in the little crevices, but it was very dirty and I washed it completely. And the, the pencil that they use, um, the grease pencil or whatever marking came right off. But I do remember I, I paid $2 for this. So obviously somebody pricing this didn't realize it was a nice old antique. <laughs> so I will take that. <laughs> um, speaking of glass, I think you know what that is. Let me move over here a little bit more. This piece actually did not come from that thrift store. We were within about the same day or two. I was looking for furniture for the shop. So shelves and display units. And there's a furniture store down the street called Franklin's. And they sell a lot of used and old furniture. I did not find a good shelving unit that day. However, I found a great little platter on one of their shelves and I brought it up front and 
he had three dollars on it. I said, hey, will you take two bucks? And he said, sure. <laughs> and I th threw two dollars on the counter and said, thanks. So I will show you this this actual platter, the same exact platter just sold, I think, March 27th um, for about $25. And that's with the, the shipping included. So, you know, two to $25, that's a good deal. And as you know, I could tell this one was going to glow without lighting it up, but um, that's the great thing about these pieces. It's depression glass, probably 1930s. It's got a good glow to it. It just has a bit of uranium in it that does that. And some people call it Vaseline glass. Um, I just call it pretty. And we've got quite a few pieces. I think probably at the shop I'm going to set up a black light and sell um, quite a bit of my glass there. But that'll be down the road. So if any of the pieces that you're seeing or have seen in the past, especially this uranium glass, let me know. We can talk and I can, you know, ship, ship a piece out to you. This piece of green glass is not uranium. It's crackle glass. See, it does not light up the same way. Um, it's crackle glass. It's blown glass. I have a really nice collection of small crackle glass pieces. I have a few green pieces, that's why this one will be for sale, um, but this is a beautiful piece. I love the handle, this little kind of bubbly handle that was applied, and the mouth of it is really neat. It's almost flower-like with this little pitcher spout. Very nice piece, heavy quality piece, and the way that they made the cracked glass, when they formed these pieces, they shocked them. They shocked them and that's what made them crack but not break and just a really neat effect on some of this older glass. I tend to look for the pieces like this that have a clear handle. That's the route, the direction my collection's going. So if anybody ever sees that, <laughs> a piece like this with a clear handle and even smaller, I like the smaller pieces. Um, let me know because <laughs> that's my collection that I I look for. All right, a couple more pieces. So this piece was a little bit of a mystery to me. It's a like tiny miniature crock. I mean, so small. Why do we need these little handles <laughs> to lift it? It's almost like a replica of some kind. I'm not sure. I have to figure this out. I haven't found anything like this online. It has some age to it. it has really neat glazing. Um, I paid a hundred dollars. I'm kidding. I paid a dollar, <laughs> and I'm really curious what this is. I have a nice little collection of old Crocs, and this will probably sit with them as I'm researching and figuring out exactly what it is. So, just a neat little piece. And then this is probably my favorite find of that day. It's another crock. It's a pottery piece meant for use. So like a bean pot or, you know, a crock to make make a dish in. This is made to, um, to be used. This is made by McCoy and I absolutely love it. I love the glazing. I love this mustardy yellow with these kind of burnt... Um, tarnish details and this is in perfect condition there's no chips cracks it's just gorgeous now McCoy made pottery throughout the same time as Hall and if you've seen any of my stuff I, I um, collect the brown drip that Hall made McCoy also made brown drip pieces and this one isn't um, I wouldn't consider this a drip necessarily, but this is a gorgeous piece and I think probably my favorite because this is kind of in my taste of, you know, I, I love pottery to begin with, but just kind of the primitive look of it is really cool and that's what draws me to it. Um, maybe in a future video I can do a little bit of history on the, the USA Potteries and the um, you know, who competed with who and what you can find out there and maybe what their values are. 
Um, that's kind of what I was talking about in the video in the beginning of this video was for future content I could do that I could share some of my own collection or some of my um, my deeper knowledge about things a lot of the stuff that I share with my my thrift hauls I may or may not research in the field what they are I may know or I may at least know that the quality was there and there was a reason why I picked it up even if I didn't have time to research it I figured you know, with these mugs especially. I had no idea what those were, but I did know that they were cool and they were quality. And like I said, all the mugs at my Goodwill are a dollar. I think these, yep, that's still marked a dollar. So I didn't, there was no risk in me grabbing those. Even though they were a little out of my wheelhouse, I didn't sit and research them while I was there. I just said, yeah, those are something, let me grab them. Um, but for uranium glass, I could talk about some of the companies that made uranium glass, talk about the years that they were made, um, things like that. If that is interesting, I could talk more about crackle glass and show off my collection of crackle glass and talk about, you know, how those were made and the dates and times and things, um, the nature of those. So that's the kind of thing I'm talking about as far as future content. If that interests you, please give me feedback. Let me know because these thrift halls, nobody has these resources right now. So um, these thrift halls aren't going to be possible. I do have other things around the house. I do have things that I haven't shown. I could potentially pull together more finds and do a little bit of research on them. I could share finds that I have throughout the house, whether I've gotten them at auctions or thrifting um, a state that I have kept for myself and talk about the value of them and what I learned about them. I mean, let me know if any of that interests you because that's the kind of content I'll be putting out in the next few weeks as we get through this together. Um, finally, let's go back to this. Did you figure out what it was? Have you had time to think about it? This is a rug beater. So before the days of uh, Hoover vacuum cleaners, you took your rugs outside and you whacked the heck out of them. You got all the dust and the mites and everything out of them. You just, you smacked them. You hung them up and you smacked them. So that's what this is. It's old. Um, online, they say rattan. I don't think it's rattan. I've, seen, I've also seen willow. Maybe it's willow. But it's really cool. It's very old. It's been used a lot. Look at the wear on that. I just think it's so neat. So, and I ha I feel like it has kind of a Celtic look to it. Looks like a Celtic knot, so that knot, so that's kind of cool. It looks like a Celtic knot, so that's kind of cool. So maybe, you know, somebody with some Irish background would like to hang this on their wall. But very cool. Hope you guessed it. Thank you for watching again. Hoping that maybe this is a little bit of some normalcy in your crazy lockdown week. If you're working out there, thank you. We appreciate you. If you're on the front lines of this um, or in a retail store, if you're out there working while the rest of us are doing what we can to, to help, um, which is nothing. Um, my goodness, thank you. We appreciate you. Um, we can't, I can't say enough how, you know, how much people need to stay home and just wash your hands and stay out of the stores and keep the risk down for everybody else who has to be out there to make sure that we can eat and that we can get our health care and that we can get our gas and all those things. So please, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sure you've heard it a million other times, but just my two cents. And I love you all. I will see you next week.